Hi, I'm Phil with You Stripe and Design. All this week I've been watching World Cup Soccer. Wow, has there been some exciting games. Well, while watching it, I noticed that the grass is two different shades of green. And it gave me an idea. What I always say, if you could think it, you could create it. Using our tool, what I'm going to do is take a wall on this job site and I'm going to take the dinosaur borders and the brown plate away and I'm going to paint the back and I'm going to put a soccer field on this wall we're using the U stripe and design tool. There's a whole bunch of other designs and stripes and creations you could do with this, and this is going to be one I can show you. So what I'm going to do first, I need to put warm water on the two borders. I need to get this wall prepared. I first lay down my drop cloth, and the second, I have a bucket of hot water. Okay? This is what I'm going to use a sponge, and I'm going to get the border wet, and it should peel right off. Now. They do show, here's a tip for you. What the secret ingredient is to help you take wallpaper off the wall, you don't need the chemicals that you buy at the store. All you need to do is get some liquid detergent or powder detergent. And you put a little scoop inside your bucket and that's going to be the trick. It's going to help this border come off the wall. So other tools you're going to need is a scraper and a sponge. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to start soaking the borders. There's two borders, soaking them with hot water and you leave it sit for about three minutes. You do this two, three times. And your border should peel right off the wall. All right, I'm back. Continue taking the border off. I'm not gonna lie to you, it's not the easiest job. The thing you have to look forward to is the design that you wanna to get to at the end. And having wallpaper, that's why painting is so much better. Having a wallpaper, you have to take it off. Sometime or another, it's gonna to have to come off the wall. So, you just have to take your time, and as you take the vinyl off, it gets a lot easier when you get with the back paper like this, okay? You just keep getting it wet, and when it's just the paper, you see how easy then it is that it comes off, okay? The hard part might be, again, taking the vinyl off. That's the biggest part. The vinyl is the decoration that's on your border, and the paper is what's on behind it. See how easy that is? Well, we have to just take small steps, keep it wet, and just keep moving on. Just keep thinking of the design that you finally want to get to. Another important thing that you have to do when preparing the wall, especially if it's a texture wall, you have to make sure that the paste is totally off the wall. Reason why, if the paste is not, and you think it is, after you paint it, the paste will bubble through and you will see it on your wall. So this here is a smooth surface, which helps me out because I can feel that the paste is off the wall. If the paste was on it and I need to help get it, what you can do is get a green, like a Brillo pad, and keep your sponge and just keep washing it like that. Scrubbing, washing, scrubbing, washing. What I'm gonna do is finish the rest and then we'll, I'll show you what you do on the next part when prepping the wall before we get to our final product. All right, we're finished taking the border off. Now the next step, what we're going to do to prepare the wall, I'm going to take the scraper and I'm going to rub it all over the wall and get any kind of dust, uh, any of the old paint that there's bumps in it. I want to knock off all that stuff off the wall that makes it rough so that it's, it's really smooth. Then what I'm going to do is use this scraper and I'm going to use this putty that dries very quick. I'm going to find all the divots, dents, cracks, scrapes, whatever's on the wall. I'm going to take this putty, for instance, right here, and I'm going to fill, up, fill them in. That's the next step. So I'm going to go over the whole wall with a fine tooth comb and look for any scrapes, dents, divots, and I'm going to patch them up with a uh, compound. We'll be back. All right, after we're done filling in all the holes, what I'm going to do, what I like using, is called a kills, okay? What it does, we're gonna put this over the compound because if we don't, when we paint, you're gonna see all the compound marks. 
putting this kill zone it, it's like a primer, it's going to seal it, and then when we paint it, you're not going to know the holes that we have patched. You're like this. You don't have to be perfect with it. All you're doing is covering up the compound and the holes. All right, we'll be back. All right, I finished with the last step of putting the sizing or the kills over the compound. So to start the stages where we began earlier today, we took the wallpaper off the walls. And some of your jobs, you're not going to have the wallpaper. Thank goodness, let's get rid of the wallpaper and let's put paint designs on the wall. Now, if you don't have the wallpaper, what you're going to do is you're going to find the holes that are here, the scratches, the dents, the dings, and we're going to patch them with compound. And then we're going to lightly sand the compound, and then we're going to put the kills, the primer, over the compound marks so it doesn't bleed through the paint when you have the paint on it. And then you're ready to do the base of the wall. Now, I'm going to give you, show you a little tip. What I'd like to do, since you have the old paint that shows up on the ceiling line, I'll take some ceiling paint and barely touch in the middle where the wall and the ceiling meet. The reason why is that I want to eliminate the old paint that's on the ceiling. Now, if the ceiling hasn't been painted in a while and you're not going to paint the whole ceiling, if you go over too far, you'll see the difference. But if you do my little tip, and you barely get it on there, you're going to erase the paint that's on there, the white will blend in it because it's sealing white, you just can't use any kind of white, and then you won't see it, okay? Barely touch it. When it dries, Your friends and family walk in the room, they will not notice it. It doesn't matter how much you get on the wall because we're painting over it. But you barely want to hit the ceiling, eliminating the old paint so you can have a clean, fresh ceiling line with your new paint. Alright, we're finished prepping the walls. The last thing of prepping the walls well, what I made sure I did is we taped off the trim, the woodwork, the doors, and whatever trim you have in the room that you're painting. Now, here's a little tip for you. When I taped off the trim, I used a multi-surface tape, which is going to stick to the wood a lot better. It's going to be tighter, so when you really put the brush into the trim on making sure the whole wall is covered with paint, this tape, the multi-surface tape, will stop that paint from going through as long as you know you have the paint or the tape down tight enough on the trim. Now a lot of people make the mistake and use the delicate also for the trim, which it could work, it could not work. If you want to be for sure what you want to work that you know is going to stick to the trim, use the multi-surface tape. Now we are going to use the delicate tape, but that's going to be when we do our designs on the wall, when we do our striping, when we do the outline of the field. We're going to use the delicate tape. Some people make the mistake on not using this and they use the multi-surface tape which when you pull it off it could cause the back to pop off or it has those small crates in it where you think it's under tight and it's not. There's small little air pockets where the paint will seep through and then that's what causes the bleeding. So for the trim I recommend the multi-surface tape and when we do the striping and designing I, re I recommend the new edge lock 3m delicate surface tape okay